Hello everyone and welcome back to a new tutorial. Uh, in this video we're going to be showing you a great add-in available for Excel that allows us to build a dynamic org chart. So all we need to worry about is adding the data and the add-in will take care of everything else. So no more messing around in um, PowerPoint with having to reshape and format uh, boxes and um, adding lines or having to worry about paid for features or add-ons or well, just apps in general. So we'll jump straight into it. Um, before we do though, obviously if you're new to the channel, uh, please do hit that subscribe button. We've got lots of videos out already and lots more coming out. So by subscribing and hitting that bell notification button, you'll be sure to be notified of all of our future videos. And always, please do give the video a like. It is greatly appreciated. So what do we need to do? So the only things we need for this is obviously to have um, Microsoft Excel. And we are using uh, the Office 365 account. So I believe quite a lot of people do use Office 365 nowadays. It's certainly, I'd certainly very recommend it if you don't already, because uh, you can get it for a very cheap uh, monthly um, subscription. Um, so this is the only prereqs that you need to have uh, to do this, um, do this feature. Go into a blank sheet, and all we need to do is go to the Insert tab and navigate to the button that says Get Add-ins. And if you weren't aware of this uh, button here, um, so you can, there's a number of add-ons available to us as Office users, uh, covering from everything really. So looking on there, you can see it's data analytics all the way through to sales and marketing, project management. Um, so there's a lot of options on there, even like a geographic heat map um, one just suddenly jumped out to me right there. So obviously, aside from this, for the purpose of this tutorial, this is another great feature to um, go and explore because uh, you might find some really helpful add-ons in there as well. The one we're going to be looking at today is uh, Visio. So all we need to do in our search bar is type in Visio. And for many out there, you're probably aware that Visio is generally a standalone um, application uh, as part of Microsoft Office that has allows us to do some visualizations such as uh, diagrams, uh, uh, workflows, uh, and obviously org charts in, in the example for this video. Uh, the benefit of this add-in is you do not need to have Visio installed on your machine um, because the add-in just does this all for you. All you need to do is hit add, you'll get this pop-up here, we'll ask you to look at the, look at the license terms and privacy policy. We're just going to hit a continue because we're already done with that, but obviously it's worth noting that you should obviously always read those uh, key pieces of information before just installing anything. And then once you've done that, you'll get this pop-up here for the data visualizer. So you've got three options here, we've got basic flowchart, uh, what obviously the options you see here. Uh, I don't know why it does this, but it keeps graying out the, num the, the sections, but let's go to the next one. So we've got here the cross-functional flowchart, so slight different way of doing flowcharts, you see with the grids there and the different sections. But the option we're interested in is the organizational charts. And you can see we've got a nice selection to choose from. So we've got a uh, quick start, uh, the vertical design, a horizontal design, uh, side by side and then also a hybrid example there as well. So it pretty much comes down to your personal preference uh, or choice uh, when it comes to how you want to present your org chart. For me as we'll keep it very simple and just go for that vertical option in the middle there. All you need to do to um, obviously proceed what seems obvious is to just click uh, the org chart you require but what you'll notice as soon as I click that there'll be a data table or the table inserted into this sheet here, sheet number one, and it will automatically uh, produce an org chart. And basically what that table has, it's just got some example data for us to start with to build that initial org chart. So if I click the vertical, you can see that it's inserted the table and it's now creating the diagram, which it has already now completed. Uh, and there we go. As simple as that, we already have a basic uh, org chart to start with. Now I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so you can see um, from viewing where you are. I hope that's fitting on your screen nicely. And there we go, there is our org chart. And then we can simply, if all we needed was the information we had here by the uh, room or chance, literally just three levels, two managers into a director and then obviously four members of staff. You've got all the information you need here and all you need to do is just update the existing information. By that, if we want to change any of these names or what they're doing, so let's see uh, Ailey here, this bottom left one. Let's say actually this isn't this individual, it's actually, um, I don't know, Barry Scott. Barry Scott, 
And he's not an engineering lead, he's a, a technician manager. Don't even know if that's an actual job or if it really makes sense, but that's what we're going to call it. And actually, he probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be a manager down there, but we'll say he's a, I don't know, a, a project. Actually, maybe he's a project assistant, being logical with what the title of his manager is. So we'll go to a products assistant. So we've made our changes. So all we need to now do is if we hit this refresh button, you can see it will refresh the data. It's found that actually the name is now Barry Scott and he's a products assistant and it's automatically updated that for us. So very simple and straight to do. Uh, another quick change you might suddenly notice is what actually, uh, and I'm just going to change the name of mine. I'm going to just put in here, uh, my name, Ben. Yeah, it's just a bit easier for me to keep referencing and I'm not then obviously ruining or pronouncing a name very badly. So let's just change that as well. So let's say Ben, who's the manager of products, uh, he's got more than just two people reporting to him, he's actually got three. So all we need to do is now add additional people to this table. The key parts of this table is the employee ID in column A and the manager ID in column D. The employee ID needs to be uh, unique to each individual. And as you can see from our example here, apart from ID five, that seems to be missing, Everything is going incre incrementally up by one, just obviously to make sure that everyone has got a unique ID. So our next person would have to be ID nine. And for those who are not familiar with working with tables in Excel, all you need to do is just start typing on the next available row beneath your table, and the table will automatically register and identify your uh, new the new row you're entering information into as being a new row uh, to be added to that table. And this call this person, Tom Jones, first name that comes to mind. And let's say that Tom Jones is, um, he's also an assistant, but we'll just call him a, just a, a standard assistant. So the next, the most important, one of the real important parts here is now we've got Tom Jones, but we now need to know who he reports into. And that's where the manager ID comes in. So we know he, we want him to report into Ben. So what we need to do is find out what Ben's ID is. So Ben's employee ID is ID six. And that's all that the IDs are in here in column D. They are just literally the, the individual's employee ID, but obviously it's their manager's employee ID, uh, to put it simply. So we just need to go and get that from Ben. Or alternatively, we know that Barry uh, reports into Ben as well. So we could have just got that information from here alternatively. So we put in ID six and we'll just mark him as a staff member. The benefits uh, of obviously this role type that we have here is that allows, or this uh, dictates the formatting going to be used in our org chart. So you can see an executive, uh, so we've got Bianca here at the top there. She has been, because she's an executive, obviously her, her box in with her name is going to be red. At manager, we can see her in this purple color, and then the staff members are in this like bluey green sort of teal color. And we have a number of other options available to us there as well. So obviously we could use them if we wanted to. So once I've now added Tom Jones, all I need to do is hit refresh. And you can see that, well, in this instance, uh, that whole team has moved over to the right-hand side, but we can now see we've got those three individuals reporting into Ben. Uh, and just to go one bit further, let's add another person, ID 10. Let's call this person, I don't know, say Claire. Let's say she is also an assistant uh, for lack of um, thought. Uh, and let's say actually she now reports into Barry. So let's go get Barry Scott's ID, what's ID eight. And he is a staff member. Oh, and as you'll see, I was just using the tab button to move through each of those columns, but obviously once I got to the end, it added a new row. So all I just need to do uh, to avoid any errors is just go right click on that row Go down to delete and just go table rows. Uh, I know it's when it says table rows, sometimes people read that as in, oh, I don't want to delete all of the table rows, uh, but it just mean it just referring to that particular row you are selected in or the particular rows you have selected. So obviously, if you selected mo multiple rows there, it will do uh, delete multiple rows. So we've just now added Claire in there. Uh, we could do one more refresh, and you can see that she's now, it's now been updated to show that Claire now reports into Barry. So a really easy format to use uh, and dynamically update your org chart. 
And as mentioned before, I can't stress enough how much easier it is when you're updating data like this versus having to rearrange boxes uh, or whatever is needed in PowerPoint. Uh, and I did, did, touch, did just touch on the uh, role type. So as you'll see with Bianca, if I was to change that to a manager and refresh, you can see how the formatting there box is now changed to the manager one. So that's all that does. Uh, and we've got some other options here. So we've got like vacancy. What does that one do? Oh, it's made it yellow. Uh, and then we've got consultant here as well. Uh, so it's just got different there. So each role type has been assigned a different uh, color formatting. So that just obviously helps that as well, doesn't it? But we'll put it back to executive uh, so we know that she is still at the top of this, uh, of this tree. Okay, so well, that is the basic uh, crux of how to use this add-on. Uh, briefly touched on it here when I re um, retyped over. Obviously, if you have any information uh, you want to, or it changes and you need to change someone's name, or alternatively, if um, obviously when you first add this in there, you just need to change people's names, all you need to do is just type over that particular information that you want to get rid of. So for like me here, let's say actually Bianca is not the manager, it's actually, um, uh, John, all I need to do is obviously put him in there and I could even say, well, he's not a director, he's a uh, managing director, just again, a very lack of terms. You can see it's really easy just to get those updated and to change. Uh, and it's also worth noticing because I haven't already, if you do need to change any of these IDs because you're actually working with your own data, all you need to just do is say John's ID is actually ID 1001, obviously you can change it to whatever it might need. well actually let's change it properly, let's say um, R123 for our arguments say just to know it's quite a bit different. We can change it, all we need to do is once we've changed his employee ID we need to make sure that anywhere that uh, states his old ID of ID1 that that's also changed to uh, uh, obviously his new one of R123. So I'm just going to do that here. And it's only those two people, but as you'll see, as when that's refreshed, it still enables it to keep its um, its structure because it's then going to map those IDs accordingly. So hope you did enjoy that video. If you've got any questions at all, you can drop a comment below this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you haven't already, do give the video a like. It's not only greatly appreciated by myself because it really does help with that YouTube algorithm, but it also helps me to identify the videos containing the content that you would like to see more of. And lastly, please do subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that bell notification button <laughs> so you're notified of all of our new videos as they come out. Uh, we've got over 100 videos on the channel now, so if you, if you haven't, do check those out. Some really great content, uh, various topics to go over. So all that's left to say is thank you very much again for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Before you go, don't forget to check out the other videos on our channel. You'll see everything from other functions and formulas through to tips and tricks. We've also created some playlists so you can see these categorised together. So make sure you check those out and get all those useful information. And obviously, as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification button.